Francis. And here's Wes. Oh, and we're and live. We're <laughs> hey, world. hey, everyone. It's Antonia Okafor here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we're going to do that again. <laughs> um, it's Antonia Okafor here and... Nina Prevo. Nice to meet everybody. Nice to meet you guys on the live YouTube world. What do they call it? The YouTube? The YouTube, the YouTube's. I know I watch a show that's called Evelyn and the Internets. So, um, yeah. So we have some people here already. Awesome. So we're actually starting this new show. Um, Nina is actually our general counsel for Empowered, um, which is a gun rights organization that I started a couple years ago for young women. And we actually thought it was important for us to talk about what's going on in the world when it comes to gun rights issues and feminism and all that stuff that, you know, people want to talk about and want to put us in the middle of and act like we, you know, they can tell us what we uh, think and everything. So right. and we're going to be a part of that. Those of us ladies who, you know, have concealed carries, believe in the <laughs> Second Amendment, who want to protect ourselves against, you know, I mean, I don't think rape culture is real, but if it is real, <laughs> we need to have a way to protect ourselves <laughs> and we need a voice in the YouTube world. So we're here. Yeah. We're here. Okay. So we're going to get to it. Today we're talking about New Zealand. Of course, we're talking about um, Beto O'Rourke or Robert Francis O'Rourke. Yes, absolutely. Sorry. Which is nothing <laughs> bad because we're actually both marrying two white guys. So it's very true. we don't hate white men. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we actually like them very much. Anyways, I'm sure there's people here like, oh, of course you do, you traitors. <laughs> I know. Um, so, and then we're going to talk about him and his wooing of white evangelical women, which of course is not going to fly with me because, or her, because we're both um, evangelical women as well. Well, I'm Catholic, but close enough. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, whatever. <laughs> you know, we had a prop. We had the prop for whatever that Reformation thing where we kind of put everybody together. But so we've had enough with the expansion of the term pro life. So we'll talk about that. Yeah. And then what was the last thing? Oh, and we're here in Colorado because I just moved from one big D to the other. Yes, that sounds really bad to say it like that, <laughs> but it's true. I went from Dallas to Denver. And I'm here um, now, so we're together, and we're talking about the red flag log um, laws that are going on right now. Yeah, and I'll go into that a little bit because as she mentioned, as Antonio mentioned, I am an attorney, so I've been following these red flag laws pretty closely, and they're really messed up um, for anyone who's watching who knows what we're talking about. So yeah, and thanks for joining our first episode. <laughs> so glad you guys are here. All right, so we'll get to it. So New Zealand. Um, so can you tell us a little bit more about what happened? I'm totally coughing out and telling you to tell <laughs> us what's happening. But um, so obviously a lot of people have been, you know, talk. it's been on the news, of course, and people have been talking about it. Um, this unfortunate um, terrorist attack. I mean, you call it it's a terrorist yeah, attack. A terrorist it's. Attack. A, I always find it very ironic and interesting of how um, media always wants to pick and choose when something is a terrorist attack or when something is um, a mass shooting, right? It's a mass shooting when it's the people that they want, you know, it to be a part of that whole narrative. But um, when it's a certain type of people or victims, then it's a terrorist attack off the bat. That's it. <laughs> right. um, so, of course, in this scenario, I would say... Mm, kind of the narrative that they want and the fact that he's a white male, youngish white male, late 20s, um, which is unfortunately fits the characteristic of a lot of mass shooters that we've seen. Right, um, especially in America. Yeah. Especially in America. Um, and But this is obviously a hate crime in the fact that he targeted uh, not just one, but two mosques and yeah. um, shot and killed um almost 50 i think 50 people is the the count right now yeah 49 something yeah like yeah so 49 50 people and i think about 40 people were extra people were um were hurt in the in the scenario so yeah nina do you know what like where were you when that happened and like what type of information were you getting when you found out about it um well it's interesting i actually woke up to that news and the reason why i found out about it was because the internet was already blaming candace owens for <laughs> the attack. Um, so yeah, that's how I found out that um, a shooting had happened in New Zealand. 
Um, but what I think is the most alarming is that people are people are acting as if what happened in New Zealand should be something that we should be basing our policy on here in the United States, mm -hmm. as if New Zealand's gun laws are anything like ours, which they're not even close. I mean, to to be able to possess a gun in New Zealand is really, uh, there's a lot of hurdles to go through. Um, I don't remember the exact details, but here in Colorado to get a concealed carry permit is really not that challenging, but to, um, to get anything even close to that in New Zealand, you actually have to take tests to show competency with a firearm. So it's not just like you can go take a class, like you actually have to prove that you can shoot your gun well and shoot it safely and specifically the gun that you own. Um, similarly, they've already had really big bans in place for most guns. And I don't know if you saw this, but the most recent push, what they're going to do after this in New Zealand is to ban all semi-automatic weapons. Oh my sure goodness. This is scary. <laughs> this Just is to say awful. the word, semi-automatic. Like <laughs> that's obviously all the military style weapons that we have in this <laughs> world, right? It's um, no, it's almost, almost any everyday firearm that you're going to see. It's and all that means for those who are watching who don't know, um, shame on me, by the way. I'm just kidding. Yeah, if you're um, watching this and don't know, shame on you. We're going, yeah, yeah. Uh, semi automatic only, all that means is that it's one shot per trigger pull. That's it. That, I mean, it could be um, a revolver. It could be, I mean, again, yes, it can be um, semi automatic. Um, handgun, the one that you usually see. But for the most part, those people who are talking about semi-automatic fi firearms in general, they don't know what they're talking about. And they're trying to push this um, ban on all of New Zealand. But of course, the gun control people want, it, want that to happen here in America too, because I'm the first time we heard this. So um, I already heard that the prime minister of New Zealand, right, is already encouraging people to um because i don't really see people just like you know what today sounds like a good day to just go up to the police station and just give my firearms up <laughs> um Anyone so owns firearms exactly for one thing it's expensive but another thing um i found it interesting i was watching the uh reading the usa today article about it and that people are already going to the police station and handing in their firearms right now um which is just sounds it's just like, are you paying attention to this? The fact, the very people we don't actually need to give up <laughs> their firearms are the ones who are doing this, right? Yeah. We're probably, we're almost like those people who are going there should just be like, actually, this was a test because you're the person that probably is not going to have any issue with having a firearm and using it the legal and right way. It's the people who are probably not there, not saying just because you're not there that you're a criminal, obviously not, but it's the criminals who are not going to go and willingly just hand over their firearm to the police station or to what have you, whatever they're going to do with that, um, all, will it, all willingly and um, not give up a fight. With and it's, that. Uh, it's like what we were talking about right before we started streaming, actually. If this event hadn't happened, for example, and the you know government in New Zealand had decided to implement um, implement the same ban or say please turn in your weapons to us. Uh, this gentleman that um, did this terrorist attack, I actually didn't take the time to learn his name because I don't like to glorify these guys at all. Um, but whoever did this, they would not be one of the ones turning in their weapons, and we know that for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so we're just looking. At, sorry, guys, we're we, our first time. We're like, oh wait, who's talking who over there? The oh, uh, <laughs> Amy, Amy Robbins. So good to see you. Um, and parabiology one hundred and one. Good to see you too. Um, okay, so one question from someone from Audit is: So why does the left want to control guns? Is it really about guns? Or great question. Yeah, um, <laughs> it is a great question. I think that it's a combination of a few things. I think that there's a lot of people who are just really naive and just genuinely believe that if they could ban guns, that no one would get shot. You know, I think that that's a big part of it. And I, I know that that's really sad, but I have friends who just genuinely think that there would be a way where we could just ban guns and all the guns that are already in America would somehow disappear and there'd be no black market and nothing bad would happen. Um, but that's just, it's just totally irrational. It's not, it's not based in reality at all. Um, but I also think that it's just a matter of control. I think that um, the people who know what they are doing know that guns are the last form of defense against any kind of government encroaching on, frankly, even on stuff like free speech, you know, because if 
the Second Amendment protects the first. That's what I've always said. And they're going after the first really hard. So to get to the First Amendment, they have to destroy the second. So that's my thoughts. What, what do you what do you think? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. More power to you with that, because that's exactly what I think. And at least now I've always said is that at least they're being very bold in what they what their real agenda is. And their real honest. agenda. Yeah, they're being honest. <laughs> well, yeah, I probably shouldn't use any type of, you know, positive words with that one. But yeah, they're very they're being very bold in how egregious their reasoning is when it comes to the fact that, you know what? They're just saying it now that they just want to ban firearms. They just want to ban guns, right? Um, it's not about, you know, we believe in the Second Amendment, but, which I always hear all the time when I'm debating <laughs> someone, always waiting for that but. Um, but it, now it's, no, we just don't want guns. We don't like gun culture. We don't like people who talk about guns. We don't want um, semi, for banning some automatic firearms because for the most part, they don't even know what that definition of, a semi-automatic firearm is. They think it's an assault, assault style weapon, a military style weapon, what have you. Doesn't matter. Now it's just we just don't want any firearms at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. And they're going to do what it takes um to use, especially um, what happens in America to be the symbol or the example for the entire world. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though of course you're not gonna even in the acknowledge the fact that every country is different in their demographic and their makeup and their history, even with firearms, for you to just make the blanket statement that what happens in America is an example of what's going to happen in the world. Um, but the same thing, like she said before, is the fact that in New Zealand, they have very restrictive firearm um, laws already. And we can see that even a smaller um a smaller scenario in America where we're looking at Chicago, when we're looking at Baltimore, we're looking at these places that have highly restrictive laws already in place, but yet gun violence, or if they call it, you know, gun violence, right? Um, which is funny too, because <laughs> guns don't provide any type of violence. They're inanimate objects. But right. anyways, gun violence. Um, and that's where those places have the most. That's where they have most, most violence, period. So... Um, I think we as gun right people keep harping on this issue that it's not the tool, it's the person behind the tool. Mm -hmm. But yet, like an insanity cycle, every single time these things happen, unfortunately, it happens a lot. And it also doesn't just happen. I mean, obviously, I am grieved that this was focused on the Muslim community and it should not have. Um and I mean, it's, horrifying. it's it's horrifying, of course. Um, any human being, any human being with the right mind would believe that. Um, but what's an, also unfortunate is that the media doesn't cover. I mean, my parents are from Nigeria, and we're Christians. My family is Roman Catholic, and they talk about the stories of. I'm sorry, in Nigeria of extreme Mus radical Muslims who are killing Christians in that country right now, right now, all the time. And that's never shown um, in the media. So violent, unfortunately, violent things are happening from, you know, one religion to another um, in a lot of different places, or even, I don't even say, because I don't want to say that this man was really even associated with a religion. And if he were, he's definitely, and if you try to say that he was Christian, we would reject him because that is not Christianity. Um, that's not even close. So far away from it's so far away from that. <laughs> so far away. Um, but yeah, I can go in my box about that. Is that the media likes to choose, pick and choose when a, when a tragedy is a tragedy um, mm -hmm. if it fits what their narrative is. Um, right. So I'll get off of that soapbox <laughs> for right now. Well, um, and just to like piggy off a few things, piggyback off a few things you said. There actually was, there was an attack in Nigeria on that same day mm. that had at least the same death toll of Christians and no one said anything. And that's not to say that, um, you know, that what happened in New Zealand is okay because it's not, but it's just, it's just so obvious that the media is picking and choosing which stories they want to prop up. Um, and the other thing is I really liked you mentioning uh, America's history because people are like, for example, you had to be on TV with Piers Morgan, right? Who was one of the worst people on this issue. And he's like, ah, yeah. oh, like, what is America's fascination with guns? But the thing is, we are America because we had guns. Like, it's not even just that we um, wrote the Second Amendment in there. Like, we literally won our independence with 
that tool. And so to, to flip that and say like, oh, our founders were just wrong to even care about this, the right to bear arms. It's like, no, the only reason we aren't all British or, <laughs> you know, I guess things could have gone a different way still. But the only reason why we won the revolution is because we had our firearms. And that's our history of our country, you know, and um, we should be proud of it. Yeah, and <laughs> the darn good history, too. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm just saying. Um, Sass. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah. Well, I think, yeah, uh, I think, basically yeah, think the same, that. but, um, all right. So moving on, I know you guys heard a lot about the New Zealand thing. So we're going to be moving on. Um, so something else that I kind of woke up to this morning myself was another topic that's really passionate. I'm really passionate about, which is actually a pro-life issue, which I know there are going to be people here who are going to get upset that, um, how can you, if you profess to be a Christian, then how can you, first of all, profess to be pro gun? Cause those, those things don't go together. Yeah, of course they do. Um, so we'll talk about that later. Um, Sorry. yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> and, and then the whole pro-life issue, which apparently right now is getting under attack or really being used in the wrong way, um, with Democrats, uh, party that really should not be even talking about that issue at all um especially in light of recent stuff in new york and virginia i just feel like they should really it's not like that it's not like you're you know promoting like killing infants or anything um so again (laughs) at least they're being really really strategic about just being really bold about what they really believe anyways but um so Beto O'Rourke um you know I'm a Texas native and um Beto O'Rourke is apparently now wooing evangelical white women and why we're talking about that in the first place anyways is because evangelical white women have gotten a lot of flack lately um I would say probably after right before the midterms and a little bit after the midterms when people were found out that, you know, it was mostly black women who voted for these candidates, you know, um, in really high numbers. I think they said for um, better work actually in Texas alone, over 94% of black women voted oh, for better work. Yeah. Yeah. 94% of black women vo- voted for better work in Texas. Yes, Robert first of Francis, all, Robert Francis, Robert Francis O'Rourke, <laughs> yeah. who some people, it was kind of interesting. I was talking when this first happened, and I was making fun of um, Robert Francis or- O'Rourke. Um, he, there are some <laughs> Hispanic people who are conservatives, and they were just like, actually, he might be, he might be half Hispanic. So I don't know if you should make fun of him. Like, look, girl. <laughs> He is full Irish, whatever, and whatever, (laughs) Scottish or back, yeah, whatever background he is, okay? (laughs) He has no, he doesn't have an ounce of Hispanic in him, okay? Um, And so it, there was, they're like, oh, okay. So they're like on the bandwagon now, but I'm like, yeah, I told you guys, he's just pandering just because he's in Texas and that there's a really big Hispanic vote there. But Mm -hmm. when, when a Democrat does that, it's totally fine, right? Mm-hmm. It's totally fine. It's not cultural someone. appropriation. Oh, it's not cultural appropriation. Never. It's not, you know, being condescending to the fact that let me just use this nickname that I don't know my <laughs> nanny gave me um, because we have a wealthy background and then um, put it on against Ted Cruz, who's actually Hispanic. Yeah. And then, you know, use that the whole time to, to talk about issues that you probably shouldn't be talking about because... They're not Hispanic. I don't know. Right. But when we try to talk about it, AOC comes up and wants to be like, oh, um, <laughs> sorry. Do you remember? The bartender, like, just trying to bring up the bartender. AOC. <laughs> and the fact that we say AOC in the first place. But AOC <laughs> um, puts out this tweet, like, last week where she was upset that someone was um, talking about the fact that they don't see any Black people on her staff. And she's like, excuse me, we don't just bring our black people on staff out just to parade them out to show diversity. And I'm just like, yeah, have I you mean, read any of your tweets lately? That's all that you do. I've been trying to figure out like, obviously that. if you don't have black staff, that's racist. But if you show them off, that's also racist. <laughs> but if you hide them, doesn't that also have to be racist? Like, what's the right amount of uh, black that you should show on your staff to not like, be Like, if you're, if you're like Steve, curry you know black then you're yeah. not like, racist but like, if you're <laughs> yeah exactly like, yeah i guess yeah i guess, I guess. 
Yeah. Um, anyway. Uh, uh, well, where are we even going? Where are we even going? Anytime anyone okay. brings up the bartender, I just go crazy. Um, so, but we're talking about Beto O'Rourke because he really is, um, and this is something I didn't necessarily tell you this before, but I actually, I'm pretty confident that he's going to be the Democratic nominee. Oh, yeah. Can you tell them why? You um, for a number of reasons. Uh, the first is that I think that he... I think that he's white Obama, um, not necessarily in terms of policy, but in terms of having this like charming kind of thing that seems to get everybody riled up about him, even if he's not saying anything that means anything. Like I saw, I remember when it, the Senate race was happening, I saw videos of these people like little kids and stuff wearing shirts that were like, Beto, 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 Beto. It's like, <laughs> why? He, like, what are his policy positions? So seriously, like I, that's number one. I think he's white Obama. And I think that the Democrats are going to have a hard time resisting that. The other thing is, I actually think that Democrats believe their own nonsense. And they actually think that the country is racist and sexist. So I don't think they're going to run a woman or somebody black. I don't think that they mm. think that can win. And I think that the DNC will probably sabotage um, the candidates that are. So I think that Beto O'Rourke is the pick for the DNC. I think they're going to push him up. Um, but he's got this charisma. And what does he stand for? I, like Tim Poole did a video mentioning that his uh, campaign website has no policy positions on it. Zero. So, I mean, but it's really cool website. But though. it's super hip, it's right? Really it's like, cool Ooh, website. Beto. Like he's so cool. It's just like that's what I'm saying. It's like hope and change. We don't know what that means, but it's Beto. And I come okay, I don't know for how many people know this, but like this is coming from someone who comes from a pro Obama background. I voted for Obama in 2008 and 2012 before I changed over. That's part of my story. If you haven't heard the story, just you can go to prayer you and you know see my video but it's all that to say that i under so i know a lot of what the rhetoric that they're trying to push right now and what the type of strategies they're trying to push so yeah it's a pandering thing totally got that they were going to do that yeah i knew they're going to get away with that too and they have um, I remember I got in big trouble just because I brought that up. I'm like, okay, well, this is just something that <laughs> your guy is doing, not me. So don't get mad at me for right. bringing up truth. But then another thing, and the fact that we're going to see, I am, mean, I hope that he is nominee because we're going to see probably a lot of the same things that we saw with Obama and also a lot of the same things that the media and the Democratic Party is going to try to use against Republicans and conservatives in general to make it seem like, we're the racist and sexist ones when mm -hmm. he, I mean, they're the ones doing all this stuff. But anyways, back to Beto, because we we're talking about how the fact that he's wooing these white evangelical women. So there's a, been this movement going on of evangelical people in general, but especially evangelical women who are trying to make the argument that um, because of the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party's stance on on poverty and their stance on, uh, I mean, you can just even focus on what happened at the border with um, the whole scenario played out with um, children being separated at the border with their parents and everything like which that. I have thoughts on, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, and and which way you go on it? I'm sure there's people that can go one way or the other, and I I understand both. I can understand both. But even on that one, I still would not say that because I was on their side of that issue, that therefore I was implementing a policy, a culture of being pro-life right. because I was against children being, you know, separated at the border, uh, the, at the border. So there are people who are trying to use this argument right now that, yes, the Republican Party is a platform that focuses on you know, pro-life issues when it comes to the unborn, but they're not talking about the issues like um, what's happening at the border, or open borders in general, what's ha what's happening with poverty and people who, if you're saying that you shouldn't have um, these low-income women who are going towards abortion centers, <laughs> Planned Parent, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly, um, that they are really the ones who are going there because they have an issue with some type of, you know, um, funding for their, for their children and they're not able to do that to pro provide for them, then, um, then you should go to the democratic side because they really have a, a whole policy of being holistically pro-life. That's, 
that one single issue on the Republican side is not enough for me to vote for a Republican anymore. And so, um, and I was going to just say, we should have seen this coming as well, right? Because the Democrats have been trying to do this crap forever where they're like, oh, you're pro-life until they're born. And then you yes, don't want like free been. healthcare, or then you don't want free college, or you don't want like a UBI or whatever. It's all the same nonsense. It's like pro-life had a very specific definition, which was that you were anti-abortion and you thought that it should be like illegal. You know, that's what pro-life meant. But now they're saying like, oh, being pro-life is pro any kind of life. It's pro yeah. people having enough food and pro- It's pro gun health. control. Yeah, pro gun oh, control. Oh yeah, that's yeah, another yeah, one they're it. using too. The so. whole gun control argument that that's being pro-life. If you're pro gun control, you're saving lives. Because again, people are who are not, you know- doing their own um, research and, and information, getting from information, they're not going in to see that the statistics and the facts show the opposite, that again, more gun control does not equal saving more lives, especially not saving children or saving young people, mm -hmm. um, or especially, I don't even know how you would make the argument with the unborn life one, but especially after um, that person is alive is birth. Not so, to mention all the defensive uses of firearms that literally save lives all the time. And we don't hear about them because there's not a mass shooting reported. It's just that some random sicko got shot in a mall because he whipped out a gun on other people, you know? So yeah. that, that story passes, but, and all those lives got saved, but no one talks about that. People just want to talk about the people who actually get away with it in gun-free zones. Yeah. So, so if you guys think <laughs> we're just making this up, then I want you guys to go to New York Times. I know this audience probably is not just like reading the New York Times, but please go to New York Times and type in um, Beto O'Rourke or Robert Francis O'Rourke. He's probably not going to Robert. He's not going to have that one. But Beto O'Rourke and wooing white evangelical women. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, you're probably going to see a couple of women on that on that front page um, that I actually know personally. So the reason why I got so upset when I found out this article existed, I mean, it actually came out in October 2018. So right around the before the midterm ele elections. Um, so it's a group of women from Dallas. I, again, I told you guys I'm, I'm Dallas native. Um, I also, I'm a born again Christian. And so about nine years ago, through the Village Church, which is a tr big mega church in te in Dallas, Texas, um, there are a few women. Those women um, who are part of that article that really helped me in my journey in the beginning of my conversion of being a Christian. And so it really grieved me to find out that these same women who who brought me to the faith, who helped you know raise me up in in the faith um, as a a woman in the faith, and then also a maturing woman in the faith to find that it almost was like betrayal that they're going back on the principles that they said that they believe so much in, um, particularly being pro-life and particularly also reconciling that. It's not just the fact that you're pro-life. Like I've been pro-life even when I was a Democrat. The difference was that I realized that as a born again Christian, that I can't keep saying that I'm born again Christian and then also have the same values or, or, or vote for the same people who have these values that are against what I believe in. Mm -hmm. And so um, a couple of those people are the ones who are pushing this movement now. And I mean, it's just, I mean, Ali Beth Sucky, she had an awesome podcast that I just listened to earlier today talking about suburban women, white suburban women, because that is the agenda now is that Democrats are looking for white evangelical women, but um, white suburban evangelical women, especially, um, in trying to turn them, um, mm -hmm. cause they side. think that's why they lost the election is because of these white Christian women or specifically like the, the evangelicals who might've, um, kind of gone along with Trump on issues that weren't necessarily the same things that like the, the labor party types might have voted for Trump because, you know, he got a lot of union type people, but he also got a lot of uh, white suburban women. And so I think that they're they're aiming at them in particular. Yeah. 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 I think that's definitely what's going to be. And we're going to see a lot more of it because based on her prediction that Beto is going to be the, the nominee. So we'll see if I'm right. We'll I, see. <laughs> I did predict that Trump would win months oh. before the election, though. 
So the primary or the election? The election. Okay. Well, I guess both sides were kind of people weren't <laughs> so, betting on either of those. Um, so um But we'll I do see. think this group is vulnerable though, particularly because um Christians, we feel guilt and we um, we do care about other people. And I do think that this was something Ali said, but I do think that there is a desire to help the, the less of these, right? Or to help mm. the least among us. And, um, you know, people see the media and that's why I was going to make comments about uh, what's happening at the border in particular, mm. because even though separating children from their parents is a completely common thing to do when someone's detained because you don't want a child to be in a prison cell, especially if that prison cell has other prisoners in addition to uh, the parents. Like I worked in, um, I worked in courts for, Mm, I, like I, I was a, a clerk for a judge for about two years. And so I, lot of, I saw a lot of criminal cases. A lot of these people had children, you know, but the last thing the judge would want to do would be to send the child to jail with that person where they're mm. going to be in there with other people who might be more hardened criminals. Like some of the people who went to jail was just for petty drug offenses or something like that. But there's other people who were in the jail or the prison who were there for more serious offenses. So, you know, all of these things have nuance to them. And to just say like, oh, Oh, well, you want kids to be separated from their parents. It's like, well, that's not really the case. And there's a lot of trafficking involved in that too. Mm -hmm. But um, but to say that that has anything to do with the pro-life argument or just say like, well, because, because this horrible thing is happening at the border, we have a crisis at the border. That means that uh, we really should just abandon this abortion issue that we all have been fighting for like decades to try to get changed. And that we finally are actually having some, you know, progress with because i gotta tell you i'm a pretty staunch libertarian and um i became big a li al libertarian yeah too, like, yeah not a little one not a conservatarian <laughs> like i'm a libertarian and so um for a long time i had a lot of arguments with other libertarians on the pro-life issue but a lot of libertarians have gone pro-life now i mean maybe i'll get flack for saying that but i um every libertarian i know is i think that the the science has really gotten us to that place so we have to be careful um, with people uh, get, like taking language and just using it to mean whatever they want. And mm -hmm. this is why it's already happened so many times in the culture war. Like racist doesn't mean what racist means. So if we let pro-life get redefined by people who are like in favor of abortion, like we are just screwed, man. Like we can't, <laughs> we can't let them redefine this for us. So sorry, I went on a rant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> How dare you come on the show talking about your opinions? Not like we, we wanted that at all. So yeah, more time. I mean, that's exactly right. And that's what, that's why it's, I was so livid when I heard about this because yes, it's people I actually know who are pushing this too, but um, they're just part of a small part of what I, I'm, I'm fearing is a bigger issue. I'm sure it wasn't just this New York Times writer who was just like, you know what? And this person and these three people in Dallas, let's just focus on this. Um, at least one thing about New York Times is that they'll at least start talking about an issue if not wanting to make it up in themselves. So we'll see if it's made up or if it's real. Um, I have a feeling that it is a lot bigger than what it is um, because I've seen several people who and that's the thing is, is I've seen several prominent people who are pushing this mm -hmm. and it all it starts just like any type of fashion or whatever it starts from the top and it can be a very small niche group of people but if they're leaders and they're they have platforms and people are following them well then it's not too it's not going to be too long before other people start um focusing on what they're doing and em emulating what they're doing as well. And so I think that's why we have to start talking about it now um, to make sure that we're telling them the truth. Because yeah. that's all we can do is tell the truth. It's true. And um, I don't know, to the extent that there's Christians out here that might be swayed one way or the other. Um, and I know this is our first stream. We didn't even announce it. So there's nothing people here. But <laughs> I just, uh, you know, I, I want to encourage people to really... Um, to not let the guilt tripping of all of these people on the left affect your, or because it's, it's actually not everyone on the left, of these progressive mm -hmm. types. Um, don't let the guilt tripping affect your sense of morality at your core. Because the thing is, there are problems, of course, with uh, with Republicans in terms yeah. of being genuinely pro-life. But um, don't let them hoodwink you into thinking that because you care about life, that that means that you need to support big government policies. I mean, I know it's coming from a libertarian, but also like, don't think that you have to support um, 
these candidates that on every other issue you wouldn't support like ever, you know, these are people who want socialism. These are people who want open borders completely. These are people who want, you know, to repeal the second amendment. So yeah, just, exactly. they, they don't, they don't care about pro-life. They're just trying to get your vote because they want as many people to be socialists as possible. And if you're wondering, uh, and that's the thing too, it's, it's not like it's, it's in a vacuum of like one issue versus another or what have you. I mean, if you can just look at Venezuela, where, where they start off with, you know, repealing those from everyday people from having firearms so they wouldn't be able to defend themselves. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that, you know, especially when we look at China and, and Russia and places like that, that are against religion as we're seeing religion as the enemy, right? Um, and along with implementing socialism and then communism and then, you know, things like that, they all go together. So it's not in just this type of vacuum of, we're talking about pro-life issues. We're talking about pro-gun issues. We're talking about Christianity. They or we're talking about the economy and the free market and um, socialism. We those all those things go together because at the end of the day, it comes down to the core of: Do you understand liberty? Right. If you don't understand liberty, if you don't understand the fact that you have as an individual a um, a right. Um, God-given rights that are given to you, not by the government, but by the, your creator yourself, God, then you're, you have a problem. And that's why it all starts there. That's why all of this, the constitution, everything starts from where, what type of rights are we getting and who are we getting it from? Right. Our creator, God. Mm -hmm. So they all go together. And even if you're an atheist, I mean, you've got to acknowledge that humanity has something special, that we have a spark in us that makes us unique and that, you know, we have rights because of our you know, spark of divinity, spark of being special, the ability to have language and music. And, you know, humans are at a different level and that's why we have our rights. So it's yeah. important to remember. So speaking of the Second Amendment, so the last topic we're going to talk about is oh, yeah. state specific. Yeah, state specific. So <laughs> um, like Antonia mentioned, we're in Colorado. She moved to my wonderful state, uh, as she should have. <laughs> um, but we, in our last election, have, I think it's really a backlash just to Trump because Colorado people think he's too crass or something. But we got a pretty much all blue government happening in Colorado right now. So they're ramming legislation down our throat. I'm sure that um, in future podcasts, I'll be able to rant about some of the other bills that they're doing too. Um, but the one I want to talk about today is the red flag law, which has been picked up by a couple of um, news organizations. So I'm sure that people who follow Antonia uh, will kind of know about this law. Um, but this was a bill, they actually tried to get this passed way back in 2013. But Coloradans were more sane then. So as soon as, <laughs> <laughs> as I know, yeah. um, but as soon as they even proposed it, um, the people who wanted it to get passed got recalled out of office, like they got booted from office for even trying to propose something this insane. But in effect, what this bill does is say that if you, for example, like, um, let's say my brother had been suffering with depression or something, but he, he had a pistol for, that he had for self-defense. What this would do is allow me as an individual to go to the court and say, oh my gosh, he's so depressed. He's a danger to himself and others. And that one judge and that one person could unilaterally take away your second amendment. Um, now, you would be able to uh, appeal it mm. once to the same judge within 14 days of that initial ruling. But if you lose that ruling, um, your, your second amendment's gone for a full year. No guns for you. Even if you had a concealed carry permit, you have to turn in your guns. And here's something else that's like for those of you who are lawyers who will understand what I'm talking about. The standard to have it taken away in the first in instance is preponderance of the evidence. Now, for people who don't know what that is, that's pretty much like more likely than not. It's like, um, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, more likely than not. So by... By a preponderance of the evidence is like more than 50% chance that, you know, you're a danger to yourself or others. And how easy would it be to make up something to tell a judge that would make them think that it's more likely than not that you're a danger to yourself or others? They could even just say something like, oh, well, you know, I saw them maybe cutting, like I saw some cuts on their wrist. I don't know what it's from. It could have been self-harm. Second Amendment gone. You get one appeal within two weeks and that's it. Um, so obviously I'm outraged about this. Um, a lot of Coloradans are outraged about this. 
Uh, something I am proud of, though, is that I think it's more than 20 at this point, but a lot of counties in Colorado mm -hmm. are now just saying, we don't care if you guys pass this insane law. We're not going to enforce it. Like the sheriffs of 20 plus counties, including the county where I grew up, uh, Douglas County, although I think that they they've had a little bit of bickering um, yeah. in their county. Yeah. So um, we're in that county. But I'm proud of the Colorado for trying to do that. But this is another one of those things, okay, where it's another argument that's supposedly pro-life to be taking people's guns away because they're saying, oh mm. my gosh, think about all these suicides that we'll be preventing by, you know, having this red flag law in place because people can just get the gun taken away before they actually do it. It's like, first of all, if someone's trying to kill themselves, they're going to find a way to do it. It's they, it's it's not a gun situation. Mm -hmm. um, but second of all, you know, to say that it's like, oh, just to make this so easy to take away your rights is, um, I don't know. I, I really, I can't, I can't think that that's a pro-life issue when I personally have a gun to protect my life, to protect my life, to protect my home, to protect myself from getting assaulted. Like I'm, we're young women. We live mm -hmm. in a city, you know, we, we walk around, at least I like, I go to events in downtown Denver as an attorney. I have to walk around at night by myself. Um, what about my life? <laughs> I want to protect my life. Apparently it doesn't matter. We don't care about you law abiding citizens. Yeah. Please. Yeah. You know, me who's You're never, good. never fired a gun outside of like a shooting range. Right. But it's like, we got to We got to make sure that if someone thinks that you're depressed, they have the right to come in unilaterally and take your second amendment away. So that's just kind of a, an overview of that. I, I am curious to yeah, and Nina, I remember you talking, we were talking about this like a few months ago before I even came over here when they were even just thinking about, I think it was right after the midterm elections. And um, and I remember you talking about the fact that um, this is why, and I am probably have been a, you know, someone of the people who's done this, like, you know, guilty of doing this, of talking about the mental health aspect of, of, of firearms, right? And, you know, well, we're, we're, supposed, we're supposed to focus on mental health. Like, that's an important thing, right? Or the two-thirds, um, you know, two-thirds of gun of gun violence um, issues happen um, in regards to suicide. That right. that whole statistic that comes yeah, out, like too. Yeah, to call suicides gun violence. So it's like, oh, this is attacking, or this is handling gun violence to yeah. do this. But, that's, but, but that was also the problem, right? You were talking about that about how, why it's risky when we, as the Second Amendment community, continue to focus on just the mental health issue when it comes to our gun rights and why they don't always have to go together. Right. Well, for example, and um, I mean, this is a little bit personal, but, you know, I have anxiety and stuff. I, um, and it's not, it's not anything too crazy. It doesn't affect my entire life, but it's certainly something. You're that, an attorney. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I'm, gonna, I'm a lawyer. I might be anxious sometimes. Um, but, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, what does mental health mean? How many, how many millions of people in this country are depressed, but have never hurt a fly? I mean, it's like, just because you're depressed, you're not allowed to defend yourself with a gun. I mean, yeah. since when? <laughs> or, if you're, or, you know, so this happened to me when I was um, speaking last year at the Young Women's uh, Leadership Summit with Turning Point. So I just, I just spoke in where talk, I talked about, I shared the fact that I'm a sexual assault survivor. Um, and so right after there were girls coming up to me and talking to me. And I remember this one young woman, um, she's actually... Um, a vet, an Air Force vet as well. And she told me how she was really concerned about these, you know, red flag logs or laws that were coming out at the time. This was after Parkland and everything like that. Mm -hmm. And really, we didn't really push this again until Parkland and until after Parkland happened and after Santa Fe happened. Um, and I remember that because there were Santa Fe um, victims who were there, um, survivors rather, who were there at the conference who were talking to me too. Well, um, her point was that she's a sexual assault survivor and she's scared about these red flag laws because again, just like the mental health issue, right? Is someone who um, a family member believes someone's a danger to themselves because of depression or something like that. Well, a lot of, of sexual assault survivors are people who are clinically depressed or dealing with that or have PTSD. PTSD, have PTSD. I mean, especially this young woman who's a a vet and a sexual assault survivor right? as well. And, and so she was concerned that this is going to harm her access to self-defense and having firearms. So, I mean, that's the type of thing that people are not thinking about when it comes to these things. Yeah, it really, it's a, it's a big issue. It's actually something that 
Um, because for a long time, people tried to be like, oh, no, we like gun control is not what we want. We want to focus on like the mental health issue. Mm. But it's it, it matters how you're focusing on the mental health issue, because if what you're saying is just that certain certain, um, you know, challenges psychologically are just going to be grounds to have your Second Amendment taken away, then we really need to think carefully about what kind of mental illness would actually warrant that, because I think that there's not that many that actually would at least in terms of a carte blanche like mm -hmm. oh i can show this person has ptsd they should not have their uh, a gun it's like no that's <laughs> that's their right to defend themselves and the second amendment it's not people try to be like oh like if, if you have mental health issues like you don't need to be hunting or something it's like it's not about hunting it's not about yeah. any of that and i'm kind of sick of people saying like oh like well, what about hunters? It's like, that's not the reason <laughs> why we have guns. Hunting I mean, is fun. I mean, I actually haven't been hunting other than like with clay pigeons or whatever. Um, <laughs> but, you know, the, the real reason we have it and the reason why it's in the Constitution is to prevent the government from doing this crap that they're doing <laughs> right now. It's like, it's to prevent them from saying we can arbitrarily take away your ability to defend yourselves, not just from other people in the country, but from us. Without due process. Without due process. And that's the other thing too. Um, uh, and sorry, this is like a little bit of a lawyer rant again. But um, there's certain other ways that you can lose your Second Amendment. For example, there's certain felonies where it's a de facto at a federal level. You're not allowed to possess a firearm after you've been convicted of certain felonies. Normally, they're um, felonies related to violence or something like that. But in order to be convicted of something, the standard in place is beyond a reasonable doubt. OK, and beyond a reasonable doubt is like, I'm so sure about this that I would bet like significant money on what I think the facts are here. Like I, I'm so confident in this that I would put a million dollars that I'm factually accurate here versus in this instance, the red flag law in Colorado, it's preponderance of the evidence 50, 50. Okay. Mm, we more likely than not, you might hurt yourself. So that's it. And interestingly to get it back, like if to win the appeal, you have to show it by clear and convincing evidence. And I know this is all like legal mumbo jumbo <laughs> but clear and convincing evidence is higher than preponderance of the evidence but lower than beyond a reasonable doubt so to lose it it only has to be 50 50 to get it back it has to be about 75 percent but in every other instance when your second amendment is taken away it has to be beyond a reasonable doubt so seems like there we might be kind of jumping a little bit on this and just some stuff that's really just too lax like and I, I can understand people who are trying to prevent suicides. Like suicides are really gruesome, and especially with um with guns, it's almost always successful. So I understand the need to try to reduce suicide, but to just railroad the Second Amendment rights of everybody in Colorado is just not the way to do it. Exactly. No, it's not. And so I know we're already coming up. It's like well, almost 50 minutes. <laughs> we How can long go are on. you going to stream? I yeah, <laughs> I mean, this is like our first time. We have a lot of things to say. I mean, there's a lot of things happening right now. But um, we are actually going to be here every Monday, at least, mm -hmm. talking about the issues. So we hope you come back. We hope you share and tell other people that Antonia and Nina have finally joined forces. We're mm -hmm. in Denver, Colorado, and we're here to talk about the Second Amendment, like we should talk about the Second Amendment um, yeah. and other things too, of course, like Beto O'Rourke or something. Like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But they all have, again, they all have something to do with each other. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's the end of this. And we see we have a lot of people who are interacting in the chat room. Continue to do that. Mm -hmm. um, continue to talk amongst yourselves. We will try and probably say something in the comments afterwards if we can but if not we'll catch you guys next yeah. monday and so if you want we're both on twitter so, yeah you know if you haven't followed me by now that's yeah <laughs> seriously why I, everyone here? should be following antonia um, <laughs> for real actually when people tell me that they follow me on twitter i'm like like i always feel like cringe each time like did you see what I said yesterday? Please don't tell me what you saw. <laughs> so I'm like, ooh, I'm sorry. Like almost I apologize when they tell me that they follow me. I'm like, yeah, you got me on a bad like year. Yeah. So um, anyways, but yeah, you should follow Nina. Nina, how do they follow you? 
Yeah, um, I'm uh, I'm on Twitter at Nina Prevo. It's N I N A P R E V O T. And I've really only just started using Twitter. Um, I used to work for other law firms, and I used to work for the courts, like you heard. So um, I haven't really been able to be vocal on social media until now. But I'm going to start using it. I'm not scared to speak my mind. So um, give me a follow on Twitter. Yeah, and if you don't like girls that speak their mind, then. <laughs> Then again, you're I don't know why I don't know why you're here. So, um, <laughs> but we're we're hoping to have other people who um, come and join us as well. Um, we are again in Colorado. We're in great a great spot for things like that. But um, give us your ideas, guys. We're also looking for someone who wants to give us ideas for a show name because we, we can't come up with yeah, one. We're indecisive as hell. Oh, we don't as girls. <laughs> um, yeah, it's crazy. So, but um, seriously, yeah, at Twitter, uh, on Twitter too. If there's things that you guys want to hear us talk about, um, and I know you're just getting to know me, but specifically, like if Antonia, uh, if you want to pick her brain and get her on the live stream talking about something, like let us know. So, yeah. All right. Well, it was good to see you guys. We'll see you guys later. Yeah. Peace All right. Out. Bye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>